Red Shoes Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a very cute girl named Karen. She lived in a tiny house with her mother and was a very happy girl. She would ask her mother about everything she was curious about. Mom, what are these tiny lights in the sky? They are stars, Karen. Everyone who lives on Earth eventually turns into a star and shines in the sky forever. Karen only had one toy, one dress, and a pair of wooden slippers she wore on the street. The wooden slippers her mother made for her were not very comfortable, but they were the only ones she had. One day, Karen's mother got very sick So Karen went to town to buy medicine for her mother, and along the way, she found a pair of red shoes in a box on the roadside. The shoes shone so beautifully that Karen couldn't help but bring them home with her. Look, Mommy, I found these by the roadside. Aren't they beautiful? Just right for me. These may belong to someone else, Karen. You should immediately take them back. But if they had an owner, she wouldn't have left them there with the box. Maybe the owner dropped it accidentally. Then they shouldn't have dropped it. I found them. They belong to me now. They're mine. Baby, listen to me carefully. I may not be able to buy you new shoes right now, but I don't want you to wear someone else's shoes just because of that. Please, don't be stubborn. Promise you won't wear these red shoes. Karen sadly promised her mother not to wear red shoes and hid them under her bed. Months passed by until one day Karen came home and couldn't find her mother in the house. She looked all over until she realized that her mother had become a bright star. The next day, on her way to her mother's funeral, Karen put on those red shoes. Those who came to the funeral couldn't take their eyes off Karen's shoes. How dare she wear red shoes? Disrespectful. But Karen did not care because she loved her shoes. A good-hearted old woman passed by the cemetery. This old woman learned that this little girl was now an orphan and wanted to adopt her. Come with me, pretty girl. I will do my best to make you successful and beautiful when you grow up. So Karen went to live with the old woman for many years. Karen, you've been wearing these shoes since your mother's funeral. You need to take them off now. They're so dirty. No! I love my red shoes. Oh, Karen, don't be so stubborn. Come on, change your shoes. I'll buy better shoes, I promise. Karen did not want to offend the old woman who had been so kind to adopt her. So she finally took off her red shoes and threw them away. Days passed until one day, Karen was playing in her new room with her new clothes and toys, and the old woman brought her a new pair of shoes. But Karen didn't like these shoes at all. But these are blue, very ugly. I don't like them at all. So for years to come, Karen missed her red shoes a lot. She grew into a beautiful young lady, but her stubborn attitude never changed. Even when the old lady brought her gifts. I don't want to wear this thing. But I knit this for you. I'll never eat this food. Make me french fries. At least take a little bite, darling. The old woman was very upset when Karen got up from the table without having a meal. She made french fries for her and took them to her room. At that time... Karen was taking off her blue shoes. Look! See? 
All my things are so small now. I've grown up. Well, come on then. Let's buy you new clothes and shoes. Then the old woman and Karen went to the store. Oh, look, just like my favorite red shoes. I must have them. Let's get these. Karen, you don't need fancy red shoes. You need shoes that you can wear respectfully. Like if we need to go to a funeral. I can only buy you one pair of shoes. Let's buy those black ones and go home. I am very tired. I don't care. If you don't buy both shoes, I'll walk barefoot everywhere from now on. <sighs> Little girl, I wish you weren't so stubborn. The old woman bought the black shoes for Karen and spent the last of her money to appease her with the red sparkly shoes too. They had to walk home on foot. The old woman's feet hurt a lot along the way, and she could not keep up with the spoiled Karen. And Karen didn't care. She walked on home with her new red shoes. One day, the old woman told Karen that they needed to attend a funeral in town. Karen, be sure to put on your black shoes, otherwise it will be disrespectful at the funeral. Karen looked at the black shoes in her room and then at the bright red ones. She chose to put on the red shoes. When they left the house, she covered them up with her skirt so the old woman would not see the shoes. However, at the funeral, everyone saw Karen's shoes shining brightly under her skirt. They spoke amongst themselves about Karen's red shoes at the funeral and about how disrespectful the shoes were. When what was said came to the old woman's ear, she got very angry. You didn't listen to what I told you, and you put on the red shoes again. You're so stubborn, Karen. Show some respect. A handsome young lord, passing by at that time, was struck by Karen's beauty. He came to her and went down on his knees and gave her compliments. How beautiful you are, and so delicate in these beautiful shoes. Ah, uh, my lord, you make me blush. You must be a very good dancer. I invite you to the dance night in the palace tonight. Please come. With the happiness of the lord's offer, Karen started dancing with joy. But after a while, Karen couldn't stop dancing. Uh, uh, why can't I stop my feet? What is happening? Oh, oh. Karen started walking away from the old lady and the Lord while she was dancing. Karen, come back. Even though the Lord chased Karen for a while, he lost her. Karen's red shoes turned out to be more stubborn than Karen. They took her until top of the mountain and made her dance day and night for three days. Karen's feet hurt so much that she screamed at every step. Ah! Ah! Oh! Even though they got into the mud and prickly needles stuck, the shoes kept dancing. Enough! I'm very tired. I won't be so stubborn from now on. I promise, please stop. Shoes, please stop, stop. And when Karen said she'd give up all her stubbornness, the red shoes jumped off her feet and Karen too fell to the ground. And the red shoes kept on dancing without her. Karen found a stick and managed to limp home in pain. Her legs hurt a lot. She started to cry with happiness when she saw her house. The old woman greeted her at the door. They hugged each other. I know I was very stubborn, girl, but I promise I won't be like that anymore. 
after Karen gave up her stubbornness, things started to get better. One day, someone knocked on the door. It was the young and handsome Lord. Well, there you are, Karen. I tried to keep up, but you danced so fast. How did you do that? <laughs> Karen was glad to see the handsome and young Lord. That was the day the Lord and Karen's love began, leaving stubbornness behind. Karen lived a happy and peaceful life. Once upon a time, there lived a king who had 12 beautiful daughters. These 12 princesses lived all together in a big, beautiful room. The king protected his daughters with his heart. And when they went to bed at night time, he did not allow them to go out. But every morning, they would wake up to something very strange. The shoes of the princesses would all be worn out as if they had danced all night long. The king had to buy his daughters new shoes every day. But the following days after, the shoes just kept wearing out. Neither the king nor his men in the castle could solve the mystery of the shoes. How is this even possible? How can a pair of shoes worn out like that in just one night? Your Highness, we can't understand. Finally, the king said, Whoever solves the mystery of my daughter's shoes will get to marry whichever daughter of mine he chooses, become my son-in-law, and get to be the king when I pass away. But he has three days and three nights to solve it. Otherwise, he will spend his life in prison. Many young men in the kingdom and even princes from other kingdoms came to the castle for the job. For days they guarded the door of the twelve princesses' bedroom. But after some time, none of them could solve the mystery. And shoes continued to wear out by the night. Finally, a good-hearted young man also wanted to give it a shot. And so he made his way to the castle. On his way, he met a lanky old lady who looked very poor. My dear child, I'm very hungry. Would you be kind enough to give me a piece of bread? The young man gave all the food he had in his bag to the old lady. She was very happy because the previous men who had passed didn't give anything. The old woman knew that this one was different than the others. So, in return, she gave him a magic cape. Take this magic cape. When you wear it, you will be invisible. When it strikes 12 o'clock at night, put the cape on, be invisible, and get in the princess's room. This way you can solve the mystery of the shoes. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. No, oh, those nasty princesses. <laughs> the young man took the magic cape and went to the castle. And when he arrived, he said that he was there to solve the mystery of the shoes. First day, when he was keeping guard in front of the princess's room, the oldest princess came out with a glass of lemonade. You must be thirsty. We have prepared some lemonade for you. Please, have some. The young man forgot about the old lady's warning and drank it. Soon after, he was very sleepy. He fell asleep, snoring all night in the room that they had prepared for him. When it was morning, the young man stood up in a panic. I was supposed to wear the magic cape and get in the princess's room. On the second night, the young man once again kept guard in front of the princess's room. This time, another princess came out with a glass of juice in her hand. 
The young man was so thirsty while keeping guard and waiting for the nightfall. Without thinking, he drank all the juice that had been given to him. And of course, dozed off once again. The next morning when he woke up, he finally remembered the old lady's words. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. There must be a sleeping pill in the drinks the princesses give me. At that moment, the king came next to him. Two days have gone by and you still haven't solved the mystery of the shoes. If you cannot do it today, you will end up in prison and stay there for the rest of your life. The king finished his talk and went away. The young man had to solve this mystery today. That night, for the last time, the young man kept guard in front of the princess's door. This time, the youngest princess came out with an orange juice in her hand. But the young man was aware now. He took the glass, thanking the princess. And when the princess left, he poured the orange juice in a pot next to him. This time round, he was standing tall. The night fell and soon it was midnight. The young man put his cape on and at that moment became invisible. Slowly he opened the door and could not believe what he was seeing. All of the princesses were wearing their most beautiful ball gowns, hair and makeup done with their very new shoes. Let's see if the young man at the door has fallen asleep. One of the princesses opened the door and looked outside. And another princess put her ear on the wall. At that moment, the young man knew that he had to make some snoring noises. The oldest princess pushed her bed aside and clapped her hands three times. A secret passage opened in the place of the bed. The young man could not believe his eyes. One by one, all the princesses walked inside. And of course, the young man followed. The secret passage was opening to a stairway which had hundreds of steps going down. When they were going down the stairs, at one point, the young man accidentally stepped on one of the princess's skirts. Oh, somebody stepped on my skirt! Oh, nonsense. It was probably you. When the stairs had finished, they came into a forest. They went past tall trees with beautiful silver branches. The young man took a branch and kept following the princesses. After another long walk, they stopped on the edge of a river. In the river, there were 12 boats in the shape of swans, and in them, there were 12 princes waiting for the princesses. They got on the boats, and the young man got on the last one. The boat seems heavier than usual today, as if another person is on it. Strange. Oh, come on, stop dreaming. When they crossed the river, they came across a big shiny castle, and they could hear music coming from inside. When he looked through the window, the young man saw many people dancing. As soon as they entered the castle, the princesses started to dance. They would never get tired and just kept on dancing. Of course, their shoes started to wear out. The young man could not bear his hunger anymore. So he took a slice of cake on the table and started to eat. The youngest princess saw this. Hey, my cake! My cake is floating as if someone invisible is eating it! Come on, stop it with this nonsense. The young man took a golden cup from the table without anyone noticing. The princesses danced till the morning. Then they got on the boats, crossed the river, walked through the forest, walked up the very long staircase, and finally they came back to their castle. But their shoes were all worn out once again. The young man was very happy that he had finally solved the mystery of the worn out shoes.
A while later, the king came next to the young man. Your time is up today. Did you solve the mystery of the shoes? Yes, your highness, I did. And so he told him everything. The king didn't believe him at first. But when the young man showed him the silver branch from the forest and the golden cup from the shining castle, the king knew he was telling the truth. And so he kept his promise and granted him the right to marry whichever princess he chose. The young man said that he wanted to marry the youngest one. The twelve dancing princesses were clearly not happy because their secret was out now. But the young man and the youngest princess got married and lived happily ever after.